Sahibakari Volume 3, Book 50, Conditions. Hadith Number 874. Narrated by Marwan and Al Miswar bin Makrama, from the companions of Allah's Apostle, when Suhail bin Amr agreed to the treaty, of Hudaybiyah, one of the things he stipulated then, was that the Prophet should return to them, i.e. the pagans, anyone coming to him from their side, even if he was a Muslim, and would not interfere between them and that person. The Muslims did not like this condition and got disgusted with it. Suhail did not agree except with that condition. So, the Prophet agreed to that condition and returned Abu Jandal to his father Suhail bin Amr. Thenceforward the Prophet returned everyone in that period, of truce, even if he was a Muslim. During that period some believing women emigrants including Umm Kaltham bint Uqba bin Abu Mu'ayd who came to Allah's apostle and she was a young lady then. Her relative came to the Prophet and asked him to return her, but the Prophet did not return her to them for Allah had revealed the following verse regarding women. O you who believe! When the believing women come to you as emigrants, Examine them, Allah knows best as to their belief, then if you know them for true believers, send them not back to the unbelievers, for, they are not lawful, wives, for the disbelievers, nor are the unbelievers lawful, husbands, for them, 60.10. Narrated your way, Aisha told me, Allah's apostle used to examine them according to this verse, O oh you who believe. When the believing women come to you, as emigrants test them, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. 60.10-12, Aisha said, when any of them agreed to that condition Allah's apostle would say to her, I have accepted your pledge of allegiance. He would only say that, but, by Allah he never touched the hand of any women, i.e. never shook hands with them, while taking the pledge of allegiance and he never took their pledge of allegiance except by his words, only, dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 3, Book 50, Hadith Number 875 Narrated by Jarir, when I gave the Pledge of Allegiance to Allah's Apostle and he stipulated that I should give good advice to every Muslim. Sahih Bukhari Volume 3, Book 50, Hadith Number 876 Narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah, I gave the Pledge of Allegiance to Allah's Apostle for offering the prayers perfectly paying the zakat and giving good advice to every Muslim. Sahih Bukhari Volume 3, Book 50, Hadith Number 877 Narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's Apostle said, If someone sells pollinated date palms, their fruits will be for the seller, unless the buyer stipulates the contrary. Sahih Bukhari Volume 3, Book 50 Hadith number 878. Narrated by Yurway, Aisha told me that Barrera came to seek her help in writing for emancipation and at that time she had not paid any part of her price. Aisha said to her, Go to your masters and if they agree that I will pay your price, and free you, on condition that your wallah will be for me, I will pay the money. Barrera told her masters about that, but they refused, and said, if Aisha wants to do a favor she could, but your wallah will be for us. Aisha informed Allah's apostle of that and he said to her, Buy an manumit Barrera as the wallah will go to the monument. Sahih Bukhari Volume 3, Book 50, Hadith Number 879 Narrated by Jabir, While I was riding a, slow, and tired camel, the Prophet passed by and beat it and prayed for Allah's blessings for it. The camel became so fast as it had never been before. The Prophet then said, Sell it to me for one okiyah, of gold. Dot. I said, No, he again said, Sell it to me for one okiyah, of gold. Dot. I sold it and stipulated that I should ride it to my house. When we reached Medina, I took that camel to the Prophet and he gave me its price. I returned home but he sent for me. And when I went to him, he said, I will not take your camel. Take your camel as a gift for you. Various narrations are mentioned here with slight variations in expressions relating the condition that Jabir had the right to ride the sold camel up to Medina. Sahib Bukhari Volume 003, Book 50, Hadith Number 880. Narrated by Abu Huraira. 
the Angsar said to the Prophet, Divide our date palms between us and our emigrant brothers. The Prophet said, No, the Angsar said to the emigrants, You may do the labor, in our gardens, and we will share the fruits with you. The emigrants said, We hear and obey. Sahib Akari, Volume 003, Book 50, Hadith Number 881. Narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's Apostle gave the land of Kaibar to the Jews on the condition that they would work on it and cultivate it and they would get half of its yield. Sahib Bukhari Vol. 003, Book 50, Hadith No. 882 Narrated by Uqba bin Amir, Allah's Apostle said, From among all the conditions which you have to fulfill, the conditions which make it legal for you to have sexual relations, i.e. the marriage contract, have the greatest right to be fulfilled. Sahib Bukhari Vol. 003, Book 50, Hadith No. 883 Narrated by Rafi bin Kadij, we used to work on the fields more than the other Angsar, and we used to rent the land, for the yield of a specific portion of it. But sometimes that portion or the rest of the land did not give any yield, so we were forbidden, by the Prophet, to follow such a system, but we were allowed to rent the land for money. Sahib Akari Vol. 003, Book 50, Hadith No. 884 Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, No town dweller should sell for a Bedouin. Do not practice Najsh, i.e. Do not offer a high price for a thing which you do not want to buy, in order to deceive the people. No Muslim should offer more for a thing already bought by his Muslim brother, nor should he demand the hand of a girl already engaged to another Muslim. A Muslim woman shall not try to bring about the divorce of her sister, i.e. another Muslim woman, in order to take her place herself. Sahib Akari Vol. 003, Book 50, Hadith No. 885 Narrated by Abu Huraira and Zayd bin Khalid al-Juhani, a Bedouin came to Allah's Apostle and said, O Allah's Apostle! I ask you by Allah to judge my case according to Allah's laws. His opponent, who was more learned than he, said, Yes, judge between us according to Allah's laws, and allow me to speak. Allah's Apostle said, Speak. He, i.e. the Bedouin or the other man, said, My son was working as a laborer for this, man, and he committed illegal sexual intercourse with his wife. The people told me that it was obligatory that my son should be stoned to death, so in lieu of that I ransomed my son by paying 100 sheep and a slave girl. Then I asked the religious scholars about it, and they informed me that my son must be lashed 100 lashes, and be exiled for one year, and the wife of this, man, must be stoned to death. Allah's Apostle said, By him in whose hands my soul is, I will judge between you according to Allah's laws. The slave girl and the sheep are to be returned to you, your son is to receive a hundred lashes and be exiled for one year. You, Yunaz, go to the wife of this, man. And if she confesses her guilt, stone her to death. Yunaz went to that woman next morning and she confessed. Allah's Apostle ordered that she be stoned to death. Sahib Akari Vol. 003, Book 50, Hadith No. 886 Narrated by Ayman al maki when I visited Aisha she said, Barera who had a written contract for her emancipation for a certain amount came to me and said, O mother of the believers! Buy me and manumit me, as my masters will sell me. Aisha agreed to it. Barera said, My masters will sell me on the condition that my walla will go to them. Aisha said to her, Then I am not in need of you. The Prophet heard of that or was told about it and so he asked Aisha, What is the problem of Barera? He said, Buy her and manumit her, no matter what they stipulate. Aisha added, I bought and manumit her, though her masters had stipulated that her walla would be for them. The Prophet said, The walla is for the liberator, even if the other stipulated a hundred conditions. Sahib Akari Book 51 Wills and Testaments Waysaya. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith No. 1. Narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's Apostle said, 
it is not permissible for any Muslim who has something to will to stay for two nights without having his last will and testament written and kept ready with him. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 2 Narrated by Amr bin Al-Harith, the brother of the wife of Allah's Apostle. Juwayra bint Al-Harith, when Allah's Apostle died, he did not leave any dirham or dinar, i.e. money, a slave, or a slave woman or anything else except his white mule, his arms and a piece of land which he had given in charity. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 3 Narrated by Talha bin Musarif, I asked Abdullah bin Abu Awfa did the Prophet make a will? He replied, No, I asked him, How is it then that the making of a will has been enjoined on people, or that they are ordered to make a will? He replied, The Prophet bequeathed Allah's book, i.e. Quran. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 4 Narrated by Allah Swad, In the presence of Aisha some people mentioned that the Prophet had appointed Ali by will as his successor. Aisha said, When did he appoint him by will? Verily when he died he was resting against my chest, or said, In my lap, and he asked for a wash basin and then collapsed while in that state, and I could not even perceive that he had died, so when did he appoint him by will? Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 5 Narrated by Sa'd bin Abu Waqtas, the Prophet came visiting me while I was, sick, in Mecca, Amir the sub-narrator said, and he disliked to die in the land, whence he had already migrated. He, i.e. the Prophet, said, May Allah bestow his mercy on Ibn Afra, Sa'd bin Kala, dot. I said, O Allah's Apostle, may I will all my property, in charity. He said, No I said, then may I will half of it. He said, No. I said, One third. He said, Yes, one third, yet even one third is too much. It is better for you to leave your inheritors wealthy than to leave them poor begging others, and whatever you spend for Allah's sake will be considered as a charitable. Deed even the handful of food you put in your wife's mouth. Allah may lengthen your age so that some people may benefit by you, and some others be harmed by you. At that time Sa'd had only one daughter. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 6 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, I recommend that people reduce the proportion of what they bequeath by will to the fourth, of the whole legacy, for Allah's Apostle said, one-third, yet even one-third is too much. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 7 Narrated by Sa'd, I fell sick and the Prophet paid me a visit. I said to him, O Allah's Apostle, I invoke Allah that he may not let me expire in the land whence I migrated, i.e. Mecca, dot. He said, May Allah give you health and let the people benefit by you. I said, I want to will my property, and I have only one daughter and I want to will half of my property, to be given in charity, dot. He said, half is too much. I said, then I will one third? He said, one third, yet even one third is too much. The narrator added, so the people started to will one third of their property and that was permitted for them. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 8 Narrated by Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, Utbah bin Abi Waqtas entrusted, his son, to his brother Sa'd bin Abi Waqtas saying, The son of the slave girl of Zameh is my, illegal, son, take him into your custody. So during the year of the conquest, of Mecca, Sa'd took the boy and said, This is my brother's son whom my brother entrusted to me. Abu bin Zams got up and said, he is my brother and the son of the slave girl of my father and was born on my father's bed. Then both of them came to Allah's Apostle and Sa'd said, O oh Allah's Apostle! This is my brother's son whom my brother entrusted to me. Then Abu bin Zameh got up and said, This is my brother and the son of the slave girl of my father. Allah's Apostle said, O oh Abu bin Zameh! This boy is for you as the boy belongs to the bed, where he was born, and for the adulterer is the stone, i.e. deprivation, dot. 
Then the prophet said to his wife Sauda bint Zameh, Screen yourself from this boy, when he saw the boy's resemblance to Utba. Since then the boy did not see Sauda till he died. Sahibakari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 9 Narrated by Anas, a Jew crushed the head of a girl between two stones. She was asked, Who has done so to you, so and so? So and so. Till the name of the Jew was mentioned. Whereupon she nodded, in agreement. So the Jew was brought and was questioned till he confessed. The Prophet then ordered that his head be crushed with stones. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 10 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, the custom, in old days, was that the property of the deceased would be inherited by his offspring, as for the parents, of the deceased, they would inherit by the will of the deceased. Then Allah cancelled from that custom whatever he wished and fixed for the male double the amount inherited by the female, and for each parent a sixth, of the whole legacy, and for the wife an eighth or a fourth and for the husband a half or a fourth. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 11 Narrated by Abu Huraira, a man asked the Prophet, O Allah's Apostle, What kind of charity is the best? He replied, To give in charity when you are healthy and greedy hoping to be wealthy and afraid of becoming poor. Don't delay giving in charity till the time when you are on the deathbed when you say, Give so much to so and so and so much to so and so, and at that time the property is not yours but it belongs to so and so, i.e. your inheritors. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 12 Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, The signs of a hypocrite are three, whenever he speaks he tells a lie, whenever he is entrusted he proves dishonest, whenever he promises he breaks his promise. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 13 Narrated by Yurwe bin Azizubair, Hakim bin Hizam said, I asked Allah's Apostle for something, and he gave me, and I asked him again and he gave me and said, O oh Hakim, this wealth is green and sweet, i.e. as tempting as fruits, and whoever takes it with the upper, i.e. giving, hand is better than the lower, i.e. taking, hand. Hakim added, I said, O oh Allah's Apostle, by him who has sent you with the truth I will never demand anything from anybody after you till I die. Afterwards Abu Bakr used to call Hakim to give him something but he refused to accept anything from him. Then Umar called him to give him, something, but he refused. Then Umar said, O Muslims! I offered to him, i.e. Hakim, his share which Allah has ordained for him from this booty and he refuses to take it. Thus Hakim did not ask anybody for anything after the Prophet, till he died, may Allah bestow his mercy upon him. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 14 Narrated by Ibn Umar, I heard Allah's Apostle saying, All of you are guardians and responsible for your charges, the ruler, i.e. Imam, is a guardian and responsible for his subjects, and a man is a guardian of his family and is responsible for his charges, and a lady is a guardian in the house of her husband and is responsible for her charge, and a servant is a guardian of the property of his master and is responsible for his charge. I think he also said, and a man is a guardian of the property of his father. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 15 Narrated by Anas, the Prophet said to Abu Talha, I recommend that you divide, this garden, amongst your relatives. Abu Talha said, O oh Allah's Apostle, I will do the same. So Abu Talha divided it among his relatives and cousins. Ibn Abbas said, when the Quranic verse, warn your nearest kinsman. 26.214, was revealed, the Prophet started calling the various big families of Quraysh, Obani Fir. Obani Adi. Abu Huraira said, when the verse, warn your nearest kinsman was revealed, the Prophet said, in a loud voice, O people of Quraysh. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 16 Narrated by Abu Huraira, when Allah revealed the verse, Warn your nearest kinsman, 
Allah's apostle got up and said, O people of Quraysh, or said similar words. By, i.e. save, yourselves, from the hellfire, as I cannot save you from Allah's punishment, O Bani Abd Manav. I cannot save you from Allah's punishment, O Safiya, the ant of Allah's apostle. I cannot save you from Allah's punishment, O Fatima bint Muhammad. Ask me anything from my wealth, but I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 17 Narrated by Anas, the Prophet saw a man driving a batana, i.e. camel for sacrifice, and said to him, Ride on it. The man said, O Allah's Apostle! It is a bandana. The Prophet repeated his order, and on the third or fourth time he said, Ride it, woe to you or said, May Allah be merciful to you. Dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 18 Narrated by Abu Huraira, Allah's Apostle saw a man driving a batana and said to him, Ride on it, and on the second or the third time he added, Woe to you. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 19 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, the mother of Sa'd bin Ubaidah died in his absence. He said, O Allah's Apostle! My mother died in my absence, will it be of any benefit for her if I give Sadika on her behalf? The Prophet said, Yes, Sa'd said, I make you a witness that I gave my garden called al makraf in charity on her behalf. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 20 Narrated by Kab bin Malik, I said, O Allah's Apostle! For the acceptance of my repentance I wish to give all my property in charity for Allah's sake through his Apostle. He said, It is better for you to keep some of the property for yourself. I said, Then I will keep my share in Kaibar. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51 Hadith number 21. Narrated by Ibn Abbas, some people claim that the order in the above verse is cancelled, by Allah, it is not cancelled, but the people have stopped acting on it. There are two kinds of guardians, who are in charge of the inheritance one is that who inherits, such a person should give, of what he inherits to the relatives, the orphans, and the needy, etc., the other is that who does not inherit, e.g. the guardian of the orphans such a person should speak kindly and say, to those who are present at the time of distribution, I can not give it to you, as the wealth belongs to the orphans. Dot. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 22 Narrated by Aisha, a man said to the Prophet, My mother died suddenly, and I think that if she could speak, she would have given in charity. May I give in charity on her behalf? He said, Yes. Give in charity on her behalf. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 23 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, Sa'd bin Ubaidah consulted Allah's Apostle saying, My mother died and she had an unfulfilled vow. The Prophet said, Fulfill it on her behalf. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 24 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, that the mother of Sa'd bin Ubaidah the brother of Bani Sa'da died in Sa'd's absence, so he came to the Prophet saying, O Allah's Apostle! My mother died in my absence, will it benefit her if I give in charity on her behalf? The Prophet said, Yes. Sa'd said, I take you as my witness that I give my garden al makraf in charity on her behalf. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51 Hadith number 25. Narrated by Azizuri, Yurwe bin Azizubair said that he asked Aisha about the meaning of the Quranic verse. And if you fear that you will not deal fairly with the orphan girls then marry, other, women of your choice. 4.2-3. Aisha said, it is about a female orphan under the guardianship of her guardian who is inclined towards her because of her beauty and wealth, and likes to marry her with a mar less than what is given to women of her standard. So they, i.e. guardians, were forbidden to marry the orphans unless they paid them a full appropriate mar, otherwise, they were ordered to marry other women instead of them. Later on the people asked Allah's apostle about it. 
So Allah revealed the following verse. They ask your instruction, O Muhammad, regarding women. Say, Allah instructs you regarding them, 4.127. And in this verse Allah indicated that if the orphan girl was beautiful and wealthy, her guardian would have the desire to marry her without giving her an appropriate mar equal to what her peers could get, but if she was undesirable for lack of beauty or wealth, then he would not marry her, but seek to marry some other woman instead of her. So, since he did not marry her when he had no inclination towards her, he had not the right to marry her when he had an interest in her, unless he treated her justly by giving her a full mar and securing all her rights. Sahibakari Volume 4 Book 51, Hadith number 26. Narrated by Ibn Umar, in the lifetime of Allah's apostle, Umar gave in charity some of his property, a garden of date palms called Tumg. Umar said, O Allah's apostle, I have some property which I prize highly and I want to give it in charity. The Prophet said, Give it in charity, i.e., as an endowment with its land and trees on the condition that the land and trees will neither be sold nor given as a present, nor bequeathed, but the fruits are to be spent in charity. So Umar gave it in charity, and it was for Allah's cause, the emancipation of slaves, for the poor, for guests, for travelers, and for kinsmen. The person acting as its administrator could eat from it reasonably and fairly, and could let a friend of his eat from it provided he had no intention of becoming wealthy by its means. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 27 Narrated by Aisha, the following verse. If a guardian is well off, let him claim no remuneration, i.e. wages, but if he is poor, let him have for himself what is just and reasonable. 4.6 was revealed in connection with the guardian of an orphan, and it means that if he is poor he can have for himself, from the orphan's wealth, what is just and reasonable according to the orphan's share of the inheritance. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 28 Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, Avoid the seven great destructive sins. The people inquire, O Allah's Apostle, What are they? He said, to join others in worship along with Allah, to practice sorcery, to kill the life which Allah has forbidden except for a just cause, according to Islamic law, to eat up riba, usury, to eat up an orphan's wealth, to give back to the enemy and fleeing from the battlefield at the time of fighting, and to accuse, chaste women, who never even think of anything touching chastity and are good believers. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51 Hadith number 29. Narrated by Anas, when Allah's apostle came to Medina, he did not have any servant. Abu Talha, Anas' stepfather, took me to Allah's apostle and said, O oh Allah's apostle, Anas is a wise boy, so let him serve you. So, I served him at home and on journeys. If I did anything, he never asked me why I did it, and if I refrained from doing anything, he never asked me why I refrained from doing it. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 30 Narrated by Anas bin Malik, Abu Talha had the greatest wealth of date palms amongst the Angsar in Medina, and he prized above all his wealth, his garden, Baraha, which was situated opposite the mosque, of the Prophet. The Prophet used to enter it and drink from its fresh water. When the following divine verse came, by no means shall you attain piety until you spend of what you love, 3.92. Abu Talha got up saying, O Allah's Apostle, Allah says, you will not attain piety until you spend of what you love, and I prize above Allah my wealth, Baraha which I want to give in charity for Allah's sake, hoping for its reward from Allah. So you can use it as Allah directs you. On that the Prophet said, Bravo. It is a profitable, or perishable, property. Ibn Maslama is not sure as to which word is right, i.e. profitable, or perishable. I have heard what you have said, and I recommend that you distribute this amongst your relatives. On that Abu Talha said, O oh Allah's Apostle. I will do, as you have suggested, dot. So, 
Abu Talha distributed that garden amongst his relatives and cousins. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 31 Narrated by Ibn Abbas, a man said to Allah's Apostle, My mother died, will it benefit her if I give in charity on her behalf? The Prophet replied in the affirmative. The man said, I have a garden and I make you a witness that I give it in charity on her behalf. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 32 Narrated by Anas, when the Prophet ordered that the mosque be built, he said, O Bani and Nayar! Suggest to me a price for this garden of yours. They replied, By Allah! We will demand its price from none but Allah. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 33 Narrated by Ibn Umar, when Umar got a piece of land in Kaibar, he came to the Prophet saying, I have got a piece of land, better than which I have never got. So what do you advise me regarding it? The Prophet said, If you wish you can keep it as an endowment to be used for charitable purposes. So, Umar gave the land in charity, i.e. as an endowment on the condition that the land would neither be sold nor given as a present, nor bequeathed, and its yield, would be used for the poor, the kinsmen, the emancipation of slaves, jihad, and for guests and travelers, and its administrator could eat in a reasonable just manner, and he also could feed his friends without intending to be wealthy by its means. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 34 Narrated by Ibn Umar, Umar got some property in Kaibar and he came to the Prophet and informed him about it. The Prophet said to him, If you wish you can give it in charity. So Umar gave it in charity, i.e. as an endowment, the yield of which was to be used for the good of the poor, the needy, the kinsmen and the guests. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 35 Narrated by Anas bin Malik, when Allah's Apostle came to Medina, he ordered that a mosque be built. He said, O Bani and Nayar! Suggest me a price for the garden of yours. They replied, by Allah, we will not ask its price except from Allah. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 36 Narrated by Ibn Umar, once Umar gave a horse in charity to be used in holy fighting. It had been given to him by Allah's Apostle. Umar gave it to another man to ride. Then Umar was informed that the man put the horse for sale, so he asked Allah's Apostle whether he could buy it. Allah's Apostle replied, You should not buy it, for you should not take back what you have given in charity. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 37 Narrated by Abu Huraira, Allah's Apostle said, My ears will not inherit a dinar or a dirham, i.e. money, for whatever I leave, excluding the adequate support of my wives and the wages of my employees, is given in charity. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 38 Narrated by Ibn Umar, when Umar founded an endowment he stipulated that its administrator could eat from it and also feed his friend on the condition that he would not store anything for himself from it. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 39 Narrated by Anas, the Prophet said, At the time of building the mosque, O Ban, and Nayar. Suggest to me a price for your garden. They replied, We do not ask its price except from Allah. Sahib Akari Volume 4, Book 51, Hadith Number 40 Narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, My father was martyred on the day, of the Ghazway, of Uhud and left six daughters and some debts to be paid. When the time of plucking the date fruits came, I went to Allah's Apostle and said, O Allah's Apostle, you know that my father was martyred on Uhud's day and owed much debt, and I wish that the creditors would see you. The Prophet said, Go and collect the various kinds of dates and place them separately in heaps I did accordingly and called him. On seeing him, the creditors started claiming their rights pressingly at that time. When the Prophet saw how they behaved, he went round the biggest heap for three times and sat over it and said, Call your companions, i.e. the creditors, Dot. Then he kept on measuring and giving them, 
till Allah cleared all my father's debts. By Allah, it would have pleased me that Allah would clear the debts of my father even though I had not taken a single date to my sisters. But by Allah, all the heaps were complete, as they were, and I looked at the heap where Allah's apostle was sitting and noticed as if not a single date had been taken thereof.